Hello there all, welcome to EOS Acro. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create some animated 3D clouds in Maya. A quick note before we actually get started. This video is a part of the entire visual effects series that I'm working on in which I'm holding a landscape in my hand. It covers loads of techniques and if you're interested in knowing how you can get your hands on this tutorial, watch the end of this video. Now let's go ahead and get started. In this one, I'm going to show you how to create some very simple cloud cover using fluid effects within Maya. So let's switch over to the dynamics menu and start by creating a simple 3D fluid container. Now, you can obviously go ahead and try to create an entire fluid effect container on your own but there's really no point because Maya already comes with several presets. So let's go ahead and make use of them. I'll go ahead and open up the attribute editor. Let me bring it off here to the side. As you can see, uh, the fluid effect shape already comes with several presets which is signified by this uh, asterisk here at the end. By clicking on this, you can see all the different options which are available. What I'm going to do is just choose cloud bank option. So let's go ahead and load that up. As you can see here, the goal is to achieve a sky full of clouds which is not really what I'm aiming for. I just need a small cloud cover over an island. So I need to go ahead and edit this fluid effect to get better results. So let's go ahead and change a few things. First off, I'm just going to keep the voxel square so I don't have to go edit two, three different uh, elements. I'll just increase the height of it so that the cloud is a bit more, uh, what do you say, thick, thicker, right? Uh, that's the first option which I'm changing. Uh, next thing I want to do is actually change the size of the texture itself so the texture scale. So let's try about four times larger. Okay, so this looks pretty good, I guess. Okay, so this looks pretty good compared to the island we have. And also I'm going to increase the size of the cloud cover itself so it's a bit larger. Keep it on top. Actually, I think I'll come back to the same size we had previously. Okay, now obviously for some just dramatic effect, what I'm going to do is uh, make use of the soft mod handle we have here. Okay, so good. I have this one. I'm just going to pull that out so that a little bit of the peaks are actually uh, coming through the clouds. So you can actually see the clouds being separated because of the mountain peaks. And also another thing I can do is scale it up a little bit so that there's a bit more variation here at the top. So a bit too much variation. Let's decrease that. Okay. And make it a peak. Okay. Now, I have the simple mountain and the cloud cover which I've created. And for obvious reasons, I don't really want it to look like a cube. So for that, let's go into the shading properties and use a drop-off shape for the fluid uh, container to be a spear so that it just fades off towards the edges completely, right? And also I can go ahead just increase the drop off a little bit more to get better results or basically results that I want, okay? And I guess I'm going to go increase this a bit more again. Okay, so as you can see, the peaks are visible and the cloud cover exists. Also another thing I can do is uh, I can come down to the shading properties and increase the transparency, transparency a little bit more so that the island can still be seen even with the cloud cover. I can just hit render to see exactly what I have. And as you can see, there's a simple Maya software render. All the details have come in. It looks okay, but the transparency is a bit too much. I just decreased it. Let's re-render. Okay, that looks okay. Just a little bit more there. Okay, another thing I noticed is that the cloud cover is a bit too less. So to increase that, I can go to the texture properties. It's nothing but a simple Perlin noise. And as you remember, for creating the landscape also, we made use of Perlin noise. So pretty much all the threshold, amplitude ratio, frequency ratio, depth maps, all these are the same options that you found in there. Only these are now applied in three dimensions. So I'm just increasing the threshold so that the amount of clouds have just increased a little bit. I can decrease the amplitude just a little so they are a bit softer and increase the threshold a bit. Okay, so I have this. Let's go re-render this. See exactly what we have. 
Okay, so even from the top, you are able to see exactly what's happening below on the island. So, okay, I have a bit of that done. And another thing I want to do is just go ahead and increase the depth max. So, I have a bit more detail in these clouds here. So, if I render this now, you should be able to see that I have more detail in the cloud there. So, you can see it was softer. Now, it has a bit more fluffiness, right? Okay, so that is done. Uh, one thing about this cloud bank is that if I go into my lighting, I believe, yes, there is self-shadow, which adds in shadows for the clouds. So basically, they look more realistic, more three-dimensional. So I'm just turning that one on. Okay, let's just render that out quickly. So as soon as I have self-shadowing turned on, the incandescence color uh, comes into picture. So as you can see here, it will, the clouds were all white. Here, now they have these shadows. So I can go ahead, increase the shadow diffusion so that the shadows are not that harsh. And also I can come to render, uh, render stats and turn on cast shadows. So this basically means the clouds can actually cast shadows onto the objects below them, which is very important uh, for the landscape itself. Now, these are some very basic settings which we have changed. Now, another main important thing I want to change here is that this display box is kind of annoying for me personally I don't want it displayed so I'm just going to go ahead and tell none so uh, basically it doesn't display the box it just displays a cloud which looks a bit more neater and closer to the final result right now uh, for uh, obviously clouds are never static so I want these clouds to actually move so this can be achieved if I go down back to texture I have something called the texture time and if I move through, you should be able to see that the clouds are actually moving. Now, uh, this uh, texture time, I can just animate it. So it looks like as if the clouds are continuously moving. So let's do that. I'll go to the first frame. By default, it was on the, it was on the zeroth frame. So I just come to the first frame. I'll set the texture time to zero and key that value. I'll go to the 24th frame, which is effectively the first second. And I'll go ahead, change this while texture time to let's say 0.4 so it's just moved a little bit in one second so I've keyed that value in now once I keyed these two values in as you remember my entire frame range is way more uh, longer it's more than 200 frames I'm not exactly sure how, what's the exact number it's definitely not 24 so I just want to key these two values and I want the animation to just continue. So every second I wanted the texture time to increase by 0.4. So to do that, let's go to Windows, uh, Window and Animation Editor, Graph Editor. Here if I just press A on the keyboard, I should be able to see the fluid effect. Okay, so texture time, so let's press A. So I have this here. By default, I have not changed any animation uh, uh, interpolation values, so it's set to simple uh, flat or spline, I guess. So I'll just go set it to linear first. I'll go to the final frame. Oops, sorry. I'll just go to the final frame here. I want to curve to go post infinity to be a linear value. So I just want it to go continuously straight. And by default, you can't really see what's happening. So let's go to view and here you should have infinity if I turn that on it should show you exactly what's happening so just because I've animated this portion you can see the curve keeps going straight and if I wanted to change the slope of it all I have to do is change one value and it does it for the entire range so it's a very easy way to animate the entire section without actually having to do anything so I've done the cloud animation and I've actually added in the landscape here so in the next video, let's just go ahead and take a simple play blast and see exactly what we have. So before doing that, I'll just go ahead and take the cloud and drop that into the object node and the landscape into the object node and show you exactly what results we have in the final scene. Okay guys, so that brings us to the end of this tutorial on creating animated clouds within Maya. I really hope you guys found this tutorial useful. If you did, please go ahead and thumbs up this video and share it with others who might also find this useful. If you have any critics, comments and suggestions, you can put them in the comments section and I'll definitely get back to you. Now, for those of you who are actually interested in the entire visual effects series that I'm working on, I was supposed to release it two weeks ago, but I've not yet released it mainly because I'm still working on this tutorial, tweaking it and making it a lot better. I'm putting in as much information as possible into this.
So it has literally all kinds of information from the beginning using tracking in PF track to setting up your scenes, referencing objects, using node editors, graph editor, hypergraph, all kinds of things in Maya and then rendering and compositing in Nuke. So if you're interested, go ahead, pre-order this tutorial. You'll only be charged once I actually do the final release. This pre-ordering will really help me in making more free tutorials in the future. So, so that's it guys. I really hope you guys have found this tutorial useful. I'll see you in the next one.